Good morning. Thank you very much for inviting me to participate in this seminar organized by the Maranatha Federation. Thank you to the authorities. Thank you to the audience. The title of my presentation is Recognition of Roma Values, and I would like to begin by making reference to the fact that Roma culture is diverse, and sometimes even the Roma don't understand this diversity, and every Roma individual has a device to measure who is Roma and who isn't, or who is more Roma than another. I think this is a waste of time, and this is discriminatory among us, because we are all Roma. Those that came from India in the 10th century or even before, or those who became Roma in Europe, uh, something like 500, 600 or 700 years ago, we cannot say that they are not Roma. They are. They've been adopted. There are also laws and regulations that gives us freedom to choose if we want to belong to a nationality or we want to follow a certain flag. And I think that everyone who says and who lives under the Roma should be considered as such to claim purity or to claim uh, our origin, it's a slippery slope because we, will, we would be getting closer to racism and discrimination. I don't think that Roma people understand this very well and it causes us lots of issues because this divides us and this makes us to be isolated from each other and it makes that we are not able to join our forces and so we don't have a place in the United Nations because we are not working together and we cannot get into those institutions because we are not working together. I think this is one of the main issues we are facing as a nation. Maybe Maybe because our language is not the same for all of us. Maybe because we live everywhere in the world. Maybe because the diaspora has made us a little bit different. So the thing is that Roma value are not recognized because there's not a unity criteria giving value to the differences and respecting, respecting them. The second item of my presentation also has to do with the uh, activities of the Roma people that is, are increased from 1960 when the associations began to work harder and then the Roma people began to fight for their rights. But we were always divided by this concept of diversity, of the lack of union among us. It seems that we cannot be united and the issues with the languages and the costs and some other issues that are depriving us for, from unity. Another issue, which is quite a complex one, is that we are given subsidies, but we are not given rights. Or, to say it better, we don't fight for our rights. And when we do, we don't do it together. And we need to do this together in order to be strong, in order for the recognition of the Roman rights. Another thing is corruption. Corruption is a general issue for humanity, and we belong to humanity. And 
saturado I'm so de fed up of listening that this association is still in so much and this other association is still in so much and so many things that we don't do because we are in that situation and we are not able to overcome this first step which would be to create an international organization, not just European, but global, a global organization where every Roma individual, every country with Roma people can be part of it. And then we had a global parliament to, with representation of all these countries. And for instance, to have a segment in CNN, and we can show case there what we do. Um, in where we can talk about our culture, our literature, our cinema, our music. So the general public people will get to know us. And not only individual artists. That's it's very difficult. And costly. If I tell, I ask any citizen, please do tell me five presidents, the names of the of five presidents from your country. Maybe it's difficult for them to tell me those five presidents. But if I ask him, please tell me five painters or five writers, they will remember because names of artists are more important in the world than names of politicians. This is, this is generally the case. And we do not take care of our own art. And our art is diverse, and it's very good. I can talk about music, which is the, the, the one that is better, in a better situation, because someone might be singing a song and they do not have to know that the author of that song is Roma. And once that person has learned that song and they love the song, so the work is all done. So racism and discrimination are no longer there. This is not the case, unfortunately, for sculptors or for writers. It's not the same situation. Because when someone takes a book and reads that the author is Roma, they leave it. And it's the same with painting or a sculpture. Why? Because people are not interested in the work of Roma people. Here in Argentina, there was a report by the INAMI, the National Institute Against Discrimination and Racism, and they reached the conclusion that 80% of the Argentinian society rejects Roma people. And that 20% that we have, it says they are not accepting, not rejecting Roma population. So probably that 20% uh, of out of that 20%, 10% are also rejecting Roma. So we could talk about a 90% rejection. When I began to work as a teacher, which I did when I was really an adult, because I could, I didn't attend school when I was a child. I learned to write and read on my own, and then I studied. Art, and then I began to teach at schools. And I, see, I saw that there was a high rate of rejection against Roma people at schools. When we have Roma students, students they are concentrated in the same school. If we have a school in a Roma neighborhood, that's where the Roma students are attending. But if you want to send your son to a standard school, which is two kilometers from your neighborhood, 
they are not going to be accepted. And they tell you to take your children to the school that already have Roma population, and they say your son will be better there. So we are lacking the right no, no to choose the education of our children. This is not democratic. Entonces, esto children have to attend the school in the ghetto. But this is the same situation for restaurants. Sometimes you leave your neighborhood and you want to go to a concert, to a restaurant, to a to a museum, for instance. And uh, it is difficult for Roma people because we might be dressed in a different way, for instance, in Spain and in other places of the world. To work outside my community helps me to see in that Roma presence is not admitted uh, in the public sphere. If you say you are Roma, something changes, and it changes for the worse, not really for the better. So, if we take this into account, I can affirm that if you work in art, it's going to be very ¿Por difficult for you to find no your no way. Why? Because uh, Roma community no do not buy no art unless it's no music. They si are no not interested in gitano, art. So no if gitano, Roma people are not going to value the art no of detesta. the Roma, the other people are not going to, to accept it as well. And I insist, it's something from 80 to 90 percent of the population who despises the Roma. So, and this is everywhere. If I meet someone from Peru, Mexico, Chile, and that Roma people tell me, no, we are loved here, we are respected here. But if I have a look at the situation, that's not real. But I can understand that this is a defense mechanism in order to survive. And I understand that. But I find hard to understand that those of us who are educated cannot overcome this in a discrimination in order to recognize and to give value to Roma culture. Not long ago, some, only some days ago, I received an email from Marcel Curtiade. Marcel Curtiade was help, asking me for help in order to disseminate Roma culture and writings in Latin America. And I was surprised because uh, this person who is so important wrote to me and I was honored and he told me that if I could help him and well, I don't know, well, I told him that I was looking for the rights of Papusa and Matteo Massimo who are the fathers of the Roma culture and because I wanted to disseminate their works here in Latin America because they are not now. But unfortunately, Matteo and Papusa don't, don't write very commercial writings. They are not going to sell their works, first of all, because they are Roma and they despise us. And secondly, because ethnic literature is not very commercial. So there are some ethnic literature for black people like poets with authors such as poets and some others that have fought for uh, the rights of black people, but it had to be done by a white person. 
Of course, we have Toni Morrison and so many other Afro-American writers that have even been awarded with the Nobel Prize. But there's different because the situation is different because we have black people all around the world who have studied, who are educated and who have fought for their literature and their culture. We really should follow Cada vez the que yo he hablado of some <coughs> other con people and try to do what they have done before. Whenever I talk with mismo, the president or the director of different associations, no they all tell me, yes, your no ideas puede. are good, we should do them, but they cannot do them. Sí se puede, and I think this is a lie sí se puede abrir una because it can be done we can open an international este, si, eh, institution like the IRU. Para entregar, we can hacer look for funding. We can raise those funds. For instance, to have an award eh, in the name of gitanos, Mateo Maximo. Pero también international award for Maximo all the Roma people abierto. of the world. Or something similar, for instance, Matteo Maximo, que, que, que and this would libre, be open no to anyone gitanos, with a free topic, free subject. Quiere. It's not necessary to write about si Roma people. They can write about whatever este, they want. And for instance, if that award Coetzee, is given recién, to someone such as Coetzee, for instance, sea, let's suppose Coetzee receives this award novela, and he writes Maximo. a novel este, and this would be the Mateo Maximum Award gitana. novel. He's going to disseminate our culture. Esto, es lo que I que hacer. know that this might sound strange but no this is what we should no be importa, doing to si have no other people no talk about no our values, no not estudios. only ourselves. But other people as well. It doesn't matter if they don't know us very well. But it is important, it is relevant to have someone talking in a positive way about Roma people. We could also have a poetry award with the name of Papusa. We could have a prize que gane ese premio, pero to también a un gitano que participe en el, en el otro concurso que sea abierto, no solo even para la comunidad. O incluso Roma, porque podríamos tener una sección abierta, pero se lo puede dotar hasta de 100 mil euros cada uno de esos premios, porque el dinero se puede dar. Tal vez esto suena extraño, pero imagínense que podríamos dar 100,000 euros como premio para este premio. Podríamos levantar ese dinero. Es decir, es no extraño pedir por ese dinero. Por ejemplo, en la Fundación de las Naciones Unidas, podemos tener to create good projects in Pero order no to get poder. that funding. And, I'm, and even we can uh, get their support, but I si don't have the power and I don't have the relationships si to carry out these projects. I do have the ideas and I do have the gitano. need to communicate this. We can Indole get the recognition of the Roma values. We can create very good awards in the market because markets the market only Porque respects money and value Una, and art is something we es use we pay for it they pay for gitano. some pieces hundreds Pensar of millions of dollars so eh, it is quite unthinkable for any Roma individual porque, eh, me to be awarded en, en plica, eh, uno a prize gitano, at any art eh, discipline because I know that when you write down in the application that you are a Roma, temática, this is against you. You shouldn't write it. But also, uh, Entonces, even if we don't write that we are Roma, racismo, sometimes the topic of the subject of our art uh, says that we are Roma. So in order to fight against racism, we have a, a very powerful tool with art, especially music. 
y las prohibiciones. Despite of Pero discrimination de la tenemos que and tratar de imponer but apart en el from music we should try y to have a, a place a in the art Gloria world Stefano for the Roma art. And let me uh, invite you to look for me, Gloria Stefanoski, eh, editores, any Roma writer who want to publish eh, their work in Argentina cómo, with cómo the possibility of the, of the, for those works to be distributed eh, in the USA, please contact me. Enorme, pero digna, I think que que that y que this is a huge task, but we Nosotros have to carry it out. No we de la need to, be, no to play the main roles of our history. We don't have to live from subsidies. We have to recover the rights we lost. And we have to be Roma people with rights. And we need to have the same opportunities. But we have to fight for it. We cannot hope that those rights will be given to us because this is not going to happen. You have to fight la, for your rights. La que veo and I think es que el tira la mano that para recibir, the los main los difficulty I see is that Roma people open their hands to receive even si rights. But that open hand shows five fingers. If we get together, we create a fist and will be much no more ayuda, powerful no when fighting for derechos, our rights. We don't want subsidies, we want rights. The right to be absolutely the same as any other human being. Because sometimes we are considered as we are not even human. Yes, I am seeing that in reality, even though on the documents, even though on the papers it says that we are all the same, but we can see that in reality we are not treated like human beings. So it is important to fight for our values to fight for the recognition Muchísimas of our culture, todo, our language, our art. Thank you very much. Palabras, eh, and I really hope that this speech will encourage en Roma people Roma. to meet and to be together. Thank you. Hola, Hi, everyone. Todos. Es una alegría y un honor it's an, aquí I'm very happy and it's an honor to participate in this event. Thank you for your invitation to Jorge and to me. Thank you, Maranata Federation, the organizers and all the audience. I'm Voria Stefanowski. I'm a Roma woman. I'm an activist for human rights. I'm at the Observatory for Roma Women. I have a PhD and a master by the Brazilian, Brazilian University. I also write poetry. And well, we Roma women are so many things. Uh, my PhD thesis was about Roma literature and its relationship in the process of construction, deconstruction, and reconstruction of identities. It's been a pleasure to work with Roma literature. I've been working with it since my master's in 2005, and then I worked with it during my PhD. I also would like to say thank you to Jorge because whenever we can, we work together and somehow it has the special poetic reconstructive feeling of the traditional family work of our people and we have adapted it to new realities, to new tasks. The French philosopher Edgar Moham said that at the end it's the emotion of the meaning which turns prose into poetry. So that's why I'm feeling this poetry. 
right now. I chose my topic for today's presentation first to contribute to Jorge's speech and secondly because we had a communi communication with Marcel Curtiade who brought to us by mail and uh, he rekindled my, the hopes that I had for our literature. Uh, Marcel, soon before he left us, he told us that he wanted to make Roma literature well known in the world. This gave me the idea for my PhD, which I presented in 2015 on Roma literature, as I said. And, and how I saw the potential of our literature back then, there was not much material, less even than today, on our literature. And, well, for me, it was very important for the process we are carrying out today, led by activism. Roma art, generally speaking, works very well with these processes. We all know that music and dance have been very important to value Roma culture. Also, for it's, they've been relevant for intercultural dialogue. But written literature has elements that can also work as a bridge with the other and also as the symbolic transnational relationship in the sense that we have works written in different languages by different writers in different countries. And in spite of all those differences, they do share many common elements, even the idea of a common past and fate. It is not new to know that literature in the different nations has been used to reinforce the national identities, even to create traditions and imaginary communities, as Benedict Anderson would say. It has been the, the, this has been the case in America, Latin America, and in Spain as well. Unamuno was writing not long ago about this regarding literature as the source of collective mindset and of the active participation in the creation of the Spanish identity, as it's been as well worked in literature in this sense. The importance, for instance, of Cervantes which I always been a little bit worried about because the creation of the stereotypes and the prejudices against Roma people, which unfortunately had been embedded in Cervantes' work. Is that a way that we can even talk about a before and after, a before and after of Roma negative stereotypes, even in the importance of the work of Cervantes in the identity, in the creation of the Spanish identity, Entity concerns me because it's going to be very difficult to deconstruct these stereotypes because it's embedded in the processes of the creation of the Spanish identity. For instance, we can think about uh, the negritude, for instance, of a movement that took place in 1930s, trying to find a common identity for the African people, that then it transformed into a literary movement, negritude as well. They wanted to value the black identity and culture, it is possible to see that movement in literature, in those proposals, beyond this essentialist posture that unfortunately uh, had a domination on that movement and that was the cause 
of the wane of this movement in the 60s. This concept of negritude also helped to that people and it had repercussions on the works of other people, black people who wrote afterwards and created an important legacy and an important cultural and political recognition. It's an, an example, just an example, because it's obvious that culture has always been related to the idea of nation and, of course, to the idea of literature. And so it has images and ideas that have helped to the interpretation and to the construction of the mindset, of the way of thinking and of the way of seeing the world of each different nation. And we, Roma, Sinti people, we have not been well represented nowhere in the world. We are not in those literatures. We were always like a picturesque subject in the best of representations, something like something exotic. We were more in the sphere of supernatural, something mythical, and this has contributed to the dehumanization of our people who has suffered the consequences of those representations in the reality. But by dehumanizing us, has avoided the creation of symbolic links and bonds between the majority society and ourselves. So, we don't have this empathy with the predominant society that created that imaginary on Roma people in literature. The power of literature. Well, I realized the power of literature when I was very young. With, when I ha, was 10 years old, I was taken to, into a Catholic inti, institution in Brazil. I was taken from my Roma family, which were nomadic, and in a circus. Um, there was a claim by a neighbor that said that a Roma woman had stolen me from my family. And they really believed, those people really believed that Roma women were stealing kids to do bad things, they said, and for them to work at the circus. In that institution where I spent almost two years until I could come back to my Roma family, I very quickly learned to write and to read, and I used to love literature. And I used to spend sometimes full days locked in a huge Catholic library they had. And I was there sheltering from the bullying I was suffering from the other kids. And there I found many uh, characters who were Roma people and they did steal uh, children in that literature and I was really shocked by those stereotypes and I think that I was back then when I began to research on Roma literature and that was my first contact with literary stereotypes because I already knew them from my real life. Same literature that had made us a stereotype, that same literature written by us, by our people, written who can write narrative, say, and so on, can help to deconstruct those stereotypes and to create our identity. And we are doing that. I fully agree with Marcel Curtiade that we have to support our literature, that we have support our writers, all writers and new talent. We have to value them, we have to support them. Even academic writing on literature that makes it legitimized. I'm very proud that I presented my thesis on Roma literature in the literature department because at the university everyone told me to go to the anthropology department. But I, I, I wonder, is it not longer literature if it's written by Roma people? So I'm so proud 
of this, although it took a part, this literature, which is emerging literature, even though it began in the 20s, in 1920, even though we have more and more authors and works every day, this uh, literature is emerging because it's not written for a long time. Uh, and we have to take into account that we had a blank period before the Second World War by the Nazis' persecution. And even after the tragedy, those voices were silent, as uh, we can understand, perfectly understand. But uh, not for that time in which we don't have any writers and works, we could have much more pieces of work today. Well, of course, during this time, I cannot talk about the Roma literature, history, and writers and everything. It would be lovely, but it's impossible. I do not try to analyze the aesthetic features, even though they are very important. Our Roma literature has very rich nuances and is as rich as any other literature. It is full of we could call uh, full of literality, which I like very much. What I would like is to highlight the important role that it has in the processes of reconstruction of our identities that we need so much. In my research for my PhD, I was able to find evidence of diverse texts and strategies that show how writers are working in value identity. I cannot show everything here, but I do consider that texts, especially in 1970s till today, they are in tune with the activist movement. I think there is a spontaneous correspondence what I mean is, it is not literature which is like leaflets. We are talking about policy. It is not about victims. It's a minor literature in the sense, by the loose, for instance, that it is a literature belonging to a minority which was subdued in a majority society. It's a literature that can have a very good dialogue. It's in a majority within the country and also with the notion of being part of a transnational literature. This double condition of our literature is the same as the condition of Roma people. It's not well known, it has not been studied, it has not been supported, and a part of, the, of all that is being attacked. Some of the researchers, which are non-Gypsy, they want to include in Roma literature the work of writers who are non-Roma that are representing Roma culture in their works. But I think that we have to explain why this, in my opinion, is a misappropriation and maybe with the intention that we are an object of literary representations. We can also have to think that this is a common place of this stereotype thought that Roma people do not have a literary tradition like we have dancing or singing, but literary tradition, Roma literary tra tradition is based on oral narrative in poetry, in our songs. There's nothing closer to our Roma idiosyncrasy than the use, extensive use of metaphors, hyperboles, and all the resources which are characteristic of a rich 
oral traditional culture. And I would also like to highlight that this character, which has always been the feature of our oral narrative, is part of the current narratives. And that's the reason why it's so adequate for those processes of deconstruction, because I'm talking about construction and deconstructing afterwards the identity. When I talk about deconstruction, it has to do with deconstruction of stereotypes that to highlight oral narrative and also to work on history and so many other elements. Regarding writing literature, we have different countries and many differences, but we also share some things, and it's a transnational literature. Sometimes this literature is in a bilingual way, and this is an, it has a negative impact, impact on the cost of publishing. We also find self-publishing and some people cannot publish and they write their own blogs and they have their followers, their loyal followers. But in my research, in spite of that all of that is literature, I only work with published works. From a literature began in Russia in the 1920, despite of the oral character of our culture. So it, there was a proposal of assimilation by the policies that were forcing uh, children to go to school, and the culture and the language was not valued, and it, this happened in many countries. But Roma people uh, resisted to be assimilated. The intellectual people we had there were with the Communist Party and said that uh, Roma people needed only some support in education to be a minority. So they were considered a national minority. And those intellectual people were part of the emerging activism. And they achieved that the Roma language was going to be used and they incentivated the compilation of the legends and Roma Soviet language was used for books and newspapers. So the political strategy used by this activism in a wise way because they wanted to show where was the interest of the government and how would it be the situation if they were helping Roma people. So uh, this subordination, in truth, was a survival strategy which was very successful. There was, uh, we never had experienced such a boom in literature such uh, as that of that moment. And the government was subsidizing our literature. So when we find some incentives, we find the growth of our written literature. And it was an amazing boom and the positive impact of which we are living today. It was repeated in Yugoslavia in 1960, more or less, but it was not so important as the one in Russia. Unfortunately, um, I don't have much time to give you many works and many examples, but at least I would like to tell you and to highlight the importance of being able to express oneself. This is very meaningful for a group who has been subjugated historically. That's much more important than tolerance, which is something I don't like. And writers, all our contemporary writers, have been able to introduce their reflection in these conservative environments. They have been, they have a dialogue with the other, but also they have a dialogue with our community, with our group, with our people. There are many works. And when you read them, you can see the horizontal relationship 
and you can eh, see which kind of community is that who is writing those words and also we can see the subjective eh, dimension este of this Así que es muy our people que so it is difficult to have that in some in our daily interactions which are subject to discrimination and dialogue within the community is also important we have writers and writers usually write about the need of gender equality within, within our community the development of Roma women and um, other aspects such as the need of for unity and so many others which are really relevant. This whole world, um, fortunately, I don't have the time to tell you all about it. I think that Roma literature had been neglected in the, in the fourth Congress of Varsov. We talked a lot about literature and we were discussing a lot about this and we wanted to support it. But since then, I haven't o sea, seen much, honestly. Yes, no some trabajo, isolated initiative, but grande, not a huge effort related to these means tan, of expressions, to this ser, art, eh, which is so meaningful for us. Lagunas, it could really historia, help us to eh, feel the history and, and all the blanks and also because, to uh, deconstruct stereotypes. Bueno, well, thank you very much for your attention. I'm checking my time all the, all the time because uh, I would always want to tell you so many things. I wanted to explain to you so many things, but time's of the essence. So thank you very much. Health, good luck for everyone. I really wish that this moment we are living will end up soon and hope to be able to meet you soon in person to give you a hug. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias también a ti por tu intervención, al igual que a Jorge Neidi. Thank you very much, Voria, eh, for your presentation. Nada, Thank you, Jorge, for your presentation. First of all, I would like to read a comment we have in the chat regarding your presentation, eh, Jorge. It Hola, Jorge. says, es hi, Jorge, it's a pleasure to listen to you. I agree that uh, I agree and I understand what you say about the culture that has been adopted you. I don't know about other places, but here in Spain, we have hundreds of cases who said that they are Roma people because they want to earn money and they have been damaged for our what people, they don't, they, what they do is try to change Roma culture for it to disappear. Yes, I fully agree with what you say because, well, that's, there are always groups that try to intervene both individually or collectively. Many times we've seen the example of people coming to us with good intentions, but you realize five minutes later that they are uh, telling you what to do and they want to change our essence and they tell us what we do and what we should not do. This is a risk we are facing. I was not referring to that people. Uh, society needs to put some filters. I was referring to the groups, because the first groups that left India created loads of additions in, in, in Europe. And there was a transformation that first people who left India 
Despite we still share many features with them, we have genes coming from that region. It's even up to 20 or 30 percent from some of those groups. And also our language is coming from Sanskrit. So, of course, we belong there. But there was also a renovation in our genetics when the Roma people was walking the world. And this is something we cannot deny. And I think if, when, if we look for union of all the Roma groups that have not been, uh, that had been already in Europe, you know that Roma people arrived to Europe in the 14th century. Those groups mix with us. And I think they might be Roma as well as we are after so many centuries. And what I refer to is that even though the, they are not from India, they are also Roma. So what can we say? All Roma people is only the people that was coming from India. So I think we should change it. I think we should change it this and we should open our minds and say well he speaks roma language he lives all these people for five six centuries has been living as roma people what are we going to say now they are not roma that's what i mean afterwards even in brazil for instance i speak with my wife with them. There are people who decide to dress as Roma people uh, and then do parties and they dress like us and they ask us for support and they ask me to be part of that. Of course, I don't support that at all. They are earning money just faking our traditions and faking our weddings and so on. But uh, Roma condition has to do with politic terms and economic terms. But we have to look for unity. And when I talk about the union of the Roma people, of course, there are other things that Jose was mentioning before, and I understand that, but the thing is, we have to, if we are afraid and then we don't write documents because uh, we are afraid that, that we are going to be in a database, we don't want to go, we are afraid to go to school because we might lose our language and everything, or oh, gender, for instance, women should not go to school, women just should have children, so we are not giving possibility to our women, we are not giving possibilities to our children, what is it left for us? Market, market store, stalls, what I said is that we have to go one step farther. I was saying yesterday that Spain was a role model. They do have issues. They are really being punished by a Spanish society because a Spanish society understand that association and getting all the subsidies, they are being paid, they are lazy and so on. But this is the risk one takes when he decides to go farther. And I think that we have to accept risks. We have to gather all our culture, literature, uh, tradition, everything, we have to publish it, we have to be there with all of them, we don't, we shouldn't let fear stop us. That's my position. We need equality. Roma people need to be equal to other people. Yes, Jorge. There are more questions. I will give you the floor. 
José Luis, Josué Navarro is asking how to get your books. How can we get your books? Yes, they are on a platform, platform which is called Baja Libros, and we are also going to have them in Amazon. Another thing is please do co contact me but then I would have to, to send them by post. And my, you have to pay for the delivery and everything. But something to José Luis, uh, we are having an economic crisis here in Argentina. So one euro is 150 uh, Argentinian pesos. Uh, the cost of my books might be five euros or something like that. So you might pay it. I think it's really cheap. José Luis, you have the floor. While well, you say that it is true that Roma tradition is not only uh, literature, it's also music and some more arts, you also mention oral literature, of course, it's part of literature. Some of them have done this. And I was thinking, wow, it's a huge world with oral literature, it would be wonderful, it would be amazing to be able to get all those works in fiction on, in, on areas. We could get something wonderful, but then, of course, we have that we need training, we need education and everything. And it would make it possible to reach the level you said that is so nice. Well, there's so much to do. Yes, yes I've been studying this literature for many years. By now, I have the opportunity to teach at a post-grade studies of Roma studies. It's a first grade at the University of Patagonia. Um, I spoke about literature there and they didn't know it. Uh, when I show them that we have that literature, they do fine and they tell me that's very interesting. I didn't know. For instance, we have this book by Otto Bosenberg about Talks about all the Auschwitz Nazi persecution and everything. And he values, he understands, and it helps people. There are so many things. Right now, in the Roma Women Observatory, I'm working with Roma women who write poetry, and we are going to publish their works. I mean, those are all small things, but well, we try to, to do that. And I've seen many people who've changed. Uh, their look on the world because they read a book by Jorge and they look and see Roma education, Roma culture. So I do believe in all the potential of all these. Oral narratives have helped to create our identity. And we can use this now as it was done in Russia back then. It was great then. If they didn't have this idea, we wouldn't have any literature left today. Not really. Well, we have things which are very valuable. I have a book which is very important. It's from Spain. It's a book I love. Here it is. It says, My Old Blood from, by Miguel Hernández Soto. He talks about our language and how Roma people oh, um, in the civil war, they also fought how they suffer. Many Spaniards do not know this. 
I have one student, she was a Spanish, and she told me so many things I had no idea about. And it's important because literature is important to build people. When they think about Roma people, they think about Carmen, about the little Roma girl. But now we want them to think about different ways. Miguel Hernandez, or this one, for instance, she's British, we story. And she tells lots of things about Roma people. So for me, it's very important because we have to deconstruct, as you know, the look. So literature has contributed contribute to see something. For instance, Caravaggio, we had a Roma woman stealing one ring while she was reading, palm reading. So there's so many depictions of Roma people in a negative way, and we have to fight that. And I think we can do that. I think at least we can begin to do that. Irony. I was saying that we had so many difficulties ourselves that when people take one of our books and we said we are Roma, for instance, on, on my book I say that I was no, I was living a nomadic life until when I was 17 years old, that I didn't attend any schools, that that when I studied on at university, they had to do something legally because in Argentina, in order to go to the university, you have to have the uh, compulsory studies done first, primary school and secondary school. When I Tell about when I tell all these people quite often. See that uh, I could access the university without studying before, with uh, without an effort. So that's what I'm saying here. They might always find a negative data. So that's what's saying. Don't write that you are Roma. It's the same when you apply for a job, write your name, don't write that you are Roma, as Pedro was saying, because they are not going to hire you. Each one should value when they travel. They have to value and to see if they to say that they are Rom, Roma or they might not say it, because when you say you are Roma, the situation is going to change and you are not going to be treated so well. This is a reality. So now, how can we do this? How can we value our culture? Uh, yes, Boira is what they say to my wife. I chose uh, the name of my wife for my publishing company. But also in Russia, there's a river which is called Voria. And Roma people in summer went there to swim because they thought that, that the, the waters of that river would give them youth and wisdom. And that's why uh, my publishing company is the name of my publishing company is Boria Stefanovsky. Okay.